forget to like, share, and subscribe. If y'all don't pick my sign up. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Psychology Eats. So what's eating you? Hello, everyone, and welcome to the channel, or welcome back to the channel. Thank you for clicking on to this video. I hope this video finds you in great mental health. If you're not, please reach out to your local mental health agency, hospital, and go and get help. Help is available, honey. Help is there. So, you read the title and you saw the thumbnail. Listen, I want to talk a little bit about the latest school shooting. Now, I want to look at it from the side of mental health um, of the, the, the shooter. And so, although, you know, of course, everyone is, is filled with hurt and anger and pain about his decision and what he did, it's important to look at the facts prior to his action and was there any way to prevent him from um, doing what he did in the school. And also for other, you know, children, who did the same act. So, he is, um, according to the news, this is all alleged and what I've heard um, over the internet and over different news um, news stations. And so, he is um, 14 years old. So, as a 14-year-old in this country, you have, a 14-year-old has the right to make decisions about their mental health. And so, if it was, you know, school guidance or um, according to Please the news, check the laws there was, in your state. Um, this kid was being watched by the FBI or whatever, or he had already made threats to the school. And so usually what happens is, if a kid makes a threat like that, you know, um, CPS is called or or there, the kid, the parents are told to take the kid to um, see a mental health professional. Usually, what happens is they go through the ER um, initially, and then from the ER, they are um, seen by psychiatrist, psychiatr psychologist, or a psychiatrist, and they make some sort of, you know, eval, and then they refer the kid to outpatient care. Now. <clears throat> that means that the kid can refuse care. He can refuse even doctor recommendations. At 14 years old, They, a child, because they're still a child, can make their own mental health decisions. How do I know all this? Because I'm a clinician. I work in the field. I was in the field when that law was passed 20 years ago, whenever it was. And most of us, were we, we were in shock. Like, how are you going to allow a 14-year-old to make a decision about his mental health when oftentimes they're unstable, they're unreliable, and they should not be able to make a decision like that? Do I want treatment? Will I take meds? Will I, um, whatever, basically go into treatment or take medication. They can make that decision. And so from what we know, if... If, at this point, my assumption is that he was at least seen by a mental health professional. That's the one thing. He didn't have to continue treatment because he's 14 years old and he can make his own decision. If he was 13, his family would make the, those decisions for him. Um, 11, whatever. But at the age of 14, he can make his own decisions. The next issue is the weapon. So now his dad is charged with the same crimes at a different level, but at the, basically the same crimes as the son because the father purchased the weapons. Now it depends on where you are, where you live, what law enforcement says. As soon as that kid was on the radar 
for mental illness or some sort of mental health crisis, every weapon in that house should have been removed. They should have been removed. But here we go with people's right to bear arms. And so if the dad had these weapons in the home and he's like, well, I bought them and my weapons, I'm not, I don't want them removed. Although it's common sense. You have a child who's already stated that he was going to do something in, in the school. He was going to shoot up the school. He's verbalized that. Common sense dad would have been to have all weapons removed from the house. Not only for your safety, safety of your kid, and safety of other people. And that's why parents are being called to the carpet. And parents who allow these weapons to be in their home when their child has been when you're it's been uh you know analyzed your child has been has verbalized that they have thoughts of hurting other people or themselves those weapons should be immediately removed from the home it's the same way that if you're on probation or parole you're not allowed to have weapons and this it should be the same like in some states i know you can't purchase weapons but why would you dab? Why would you purchase a weapon for a child? I don't know what came first. You purchased it, then the child said what he said. Like, either way, there should have been no weapons in the house. All right, that's neither here nor there. At this point, all we could do is learn from the mistakes of this family, and hopefully other families will not make the same mistake. If you have a child, who has said that they're going to hurt themselves or someone else and they have a plan to do it, there's no way you should have absolutely 100% all weapons should not be in your home. Your child should not have access to weapons. Now, if your child goes out in the street and they get a weapon, that's not, you're not, that's not your fault, right? As a parent. You can't control somebody else's behavior. All we can do is if someone says they're in danger, they're endangering other people. The way our mental health system is set up, even if he said that he wasn't in a placement, he I don't know if he went to prior placements. We don't know all of that history. All I know, if you put those two factors together, mental health, weapons, they don't go together. They just don't go together. And for that is why this father and future fathers and parents will pay the cost themselves. If their child goes and does a mass shooting like this 14 year old did. Comment down below, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Thanks for listening and bye. Hey guys, I got another great offer here for you. Guys, this is amazing. I love this company. This is African Joy Fix. They create customized blessing videos. Guys, you can send these videos to anybody, anywhere. They will customize the video for, for you. They are made in Africa. Oh my God. I love the video that they did for me. Guys, hit the link, go over and create a memory. Thank you so much for your support. Support this company. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. Psychology hits. Psychology hits.